Remember the famous words of Honest Abe Lincoln. There's a lot of fake stuff on the internet. Okay, I made that up. But the story behind this next video is true. Honest. It's September of 2018, and residents of Southeast Asia are bracing for a megastorm, a super typhoon. Winds up to 180 miles per hour blast through the region as social media is flooded with images of the damage. One video said to be from the Shenzhen province of China is particularly alarming. Watch as this commercial airliner attempts to land as it fights extremely heavy crosswinds. It seems to almost tip over, then it does a complete flip. But just as it seems like it may crash, the pilot appears to regain control. The footage quickly goes viral as it triggers many people's worst fears of flying. But watch again. A number of things seem off about this footage, not least of which are the supposed typhoon conditions. Certainly the winds are strong, but it doesn't look like there's any rain or even a ton of cloud cover. Planes land in tough crosswinds all the time. What you're seeing here are all verified incidents. The most dangerous part of flying a plane is takeoff and landing. That's when you're going to encounter things like crosswinds or wind shears that can really affect how you come in or how you take off. But I've never seen a passenger plane do a full barrel roll like this. Wow. I don't know about you, but I could watch this video over and over again. It's that wild. But many people online thought it was real. So we decided to track down the original source of this footage to get the real story. The creator of this clip is Mini Sirbus, a filmmaker in Los Angeles. So this video was 100% CGI, a CG plane, fence, sky, everything. But here's the thing. Mini never claimed the video was real. That was someone else. Somebody stole my footage. When the video went viral, it wasn't through my YouTube channel. It was through somebody else's Facebook post. And I only learned about it after it got millions of views. So clearly, many people were duped. But still, could an airliner flip like this in real life? Commercial planes, they're not designed to do barrel rolls and things that you might see from military jets. As the plane goes through these rolls, it appears to uh, successfully recover off camera. That really wouldn't be consistent with what we would see in a commercial plane. You're going to lose any propulsion that you have at this point because you have a catastrophic shift in this plane that is designed not to do this. Just to be certain, we asked physicist Hakim Olushei if any kind of weather system could cause a plane to flip, like in this video. A plane maintains its lift via the headwind, right? It's the relative speed of the plane going into the wind. And if there is a crosswind, then that will be perpendicular to the headwind. So it would act independently. So it could shift the plane side to side independently of the forward back motion. But now there's also a twist. There's also a rotational motion, which is also independent. So that's why the ideal wind to create something like this is a fast headwind with a tornado going around it in this way. That kind of wind would leave a trail of destruction. But look, in the video, the fence and tower are intact and undisturbed. So, our verdict? There's no question. This is a hoax. Many told us he still has no idea who passed off his CGI project as real or why. But you can be sure that when we see stuff like this, we'll be sure to call it out. We're in the countryside of central Scotland in February 2020. A local man named Derek Fable is braving the midwinter's day for a stroll. As I looked across the valley from where I was walking, I could see uh, that waterfalls were not behaving as normal. Derek zooms in on a waterfall named Jenny's Lum. It's not doing what waterfalls typically do, which is fall. It's defying physics and the laws of gravity and flowing upwards. It's really weird. You can see as we zoom in, the strange reversal creates an effect that looks almost like rising smoke. Lum uh, is the Scots word for chimney. 
So it is really awe-inspiring. It's tremendously uh, fabulous to watch. So how could this waterfall be defying gravity? Perhaps there's some invisible force at work here. Folklore suggests a mischievous, far-fetched source. Fairies. Campsey Fells, the area in Scotland where this waterfall is located, actually translates to Crooked Fairy Hill. Apparently, in Scottish folklore, every loch, river, waterway, and well had a name and a fairy that protected it. Could it actually be that fairies are messing with the water to protect their home? Apparently, fairies in Scotland can be nice or they can be not so nice if you don't treat them well. These are all fun stories, but before we get on board with the fairy hypothesis, can our experts figure out what's going on with this inverted cascade? First, has gravity somehow been altered? Physicist Michio Kaku notes that while gravity does vary from planet to planet, depending on their diameter and mass, if Earth's gravity reversed, we'd notice. Maybe gravity went backwards and things began to fall up. If so, not just the waterfall, but everything should have fallen up. The entire Earth, the orbit of the planet going around the sun. And so the idea that you could somehow turn off gravity, reverse it like a light switch. No, gravity is not like a light switch. Gravity is what holds the universe together. You turn it off and the universe starts to come apart. If gravity is still intact, could this strange phenomenon have something to do with the weather conditions on that day? If we look at the surface winds through this area, you can see that many of the winds all throughout Scotland were upwards in this kind of 25 to 30 knot wind range, which is a pretty healthy wind speed, especially if you're talking about a waterfall that doesn't have a very high flow rate. Jenny's Lum is what's known as an ephemeral waterfall, which only appears as runoff after a heavy rain. Since it's not connected to a permanent river or stream, the volume of water is much lower than you'd see in a typical cascade. Due to the low flow rate, Hin says these strong winds could explain what we're seeing. The high wind speed did seem to be strong enough to counteract the gravity of the waterfall. Winds, when they interact with water, can create aerosols. Think of a perfume, spray it in a room, and you find that these little droplets of aerosols float. Why? Because their density is near the density of ordinary air, and so they float in the air. Our verdict? Unusually strong wind gusts from a winter storm are causing the water from the falls to turn into vapor and spray up and back rather than down. April 2021, East Sussex, England. University lecturer Chris Hogg is going on his usual morning bike ride. What Chris doesn't know is that this bike ride is going to turn into a real head trip. I'm getting closer and closer to what I suddenly realize is sheep. And I'm like, what is that? And why? Are they in these kind of concentric circles? And normally they're really like sheep and noisy, but they were just absolutely silent. So what or who is the cause for these weird sheep and their eccentric, concentric behavior? If I didn't know better, I would call this a living crop circle. While the concept of crop circles may have originated with a series of hoaxes in the 70s and 80s, similar reports go back centuries, and some of the latest crop circles are so mathematically precise Many theorize that they are encoded messages from extraterrestrial forces. When you see something this odd, you have to ask yourself the question, are we dealing with perhaps some form of non-human intelligence that are controlling these sheep? This wouldn't be the first case of crop circle via animal. About a decade ago, crop circles were springing up all over Tasmania, Australia. The culprit? Frenzied wallabies hopping in circles, almost as if someone else was controlling them. And what about this wild and woolly sheep incident? Historically, there was an incident that happened back in 1888 called the Great Sheep Panic. This is where sheep, thousands of them, at the same time, they got up and they just fled. They went crazy. The cause of that incident is still up for debate today. As for our East Sussex herd, 
Whatever caused these sheep to act in unison, something powerful triggered them. Whether you think all crop circles are hoaxes or you're already at work decoding them, you've got to admit, these sheep certainly seem to be up to something. Let's turn to our experts to find out if this flock is being manipulated by extraterrestrial forces or if someone is trying to pull the wool over our eyes. Dr. Stephanie Shuttler says the wallaby crop circles have more to do with the crops than the circles. They were eating poppy plants and they got high and were jumping around in circles that made these patterns. But biologist Floyd Hayes doesn't think an opium high accounts for the strange behavior of the English sheep. I don't think there's any evidence that they're drugged. I think if they were really not feeling well, they'd probably be sprawled out on the ground, but they're all standing alert, so they appear to be healthy. So is there a chance these sheep circles could be perfectly natural? So a lot of prey species will gather together as a defense against predators, especially in open areas like this, and they will form circular shapes. What's really odd about this, though, is that the circles seem to be perfectly shaped and evenly spaced apart. So this is something that you really wouldn't see naturally happen. Shuttler looks closer and notes that most of the sheep have their heads down like they're eating. For her, that clue is the key to this mystery. What's really going on is these sheep are just eating, and the food that they were given was laid out in this circular pattern. The sheep are therefore making this formation just because that's where the food is. Chris Hogg arrived at the same conclusion. He decided to investigate after taking this photo and track down the farmer. I was like, have you seen what the sheep are doing? And he looks over and goes, yes, I fed them in that shape. So we've solved the mystery. It seems that the way to a sheep's mind is through its stomach. Our verdict, these strange sheep circles were simply a byproduct of a specific feeding method. While walking along the rocky coastline of Sambro, Nova Scotia in April of 2021, Jeffrey Howard came upon a disturbing sight. Got a little curious, wanted to go check it out and was surprised to find a headless seal. And not just one, there were more, lots more. I look over and there's another seal floating in the tidal pool. And it was 10 minutes of kind of shock of realizing, oh, this is a lot more than just a single animal that died naturally and washed up. On the coast, there's probably hundreds, if not thousands more. Of course, it's well known that seals have natural predators, killer whales among them, and of course, great white sharks. The great white shark in recent years has been extending its range into far northern waters. There are a number of theories regarding global warming and climate change that may be driving these sharks to move into sort of unfamiliar territory. When an oceanic apex predator kills a seal, you're bound to find bite marks on the carcass like this. Who just eats the head? The head wouldn't necessarily provide nutrition, not so much that they would only eat the head and leave the body. I don't really know any animals that would just eat an animal's head. Now, people have been reporting large sea beasts in this part of the country since before it was a country. The Mi'kmaq tribe spoke of a horned underwater serpent named Jipakam. But researcher Ken Gerhardt, who studies water monsters, believes humans are responsible. There are documented examples of commercial fishermen that have killed seals because they basically affect the amount of fish that they're able to, they're competitors. The other possibility could be something more diabolical and sinister, something like a serial killer or some type of cult that was looking to do animal mutilation. This mystery isn't just about the strange appearance of the carcasses, it's the sheer number of them. Dozens of animals with only their heads missing. The concern, if someone is killing seals so bizarrely, could they soon move on to humans? Let's see if our experts can find the culprit before the culprit finds us. We started by asking wildlife biologist Stephanie Shuttler if there's any way a natural predator like a shark could be responsible. It is possible that sharks went after seals and they weren't able to consume the whole seal for some reason. Something interrupted their predatory behavior. But the seals were in different stages of decomposition. How likely is it that a shark feeding frenzy was interrupted on numerous separate occasions? The fact that it's 
only seems to be head all happening at the same time suggests that there's something more calculated is going on. Let's consider the next suspect in our lineup, humans. There were some incidences recently of humans regularly injuring pelicans by slicing part of their neck. So unfortunately, this could be the work of humans. Before settling on that disturbing conclusion, we contacted Dr. Gary Stenson, a research scientist with the Canadian Department of Fisheries and Oceans, to shed some light on the subject. What happens with a lot of these animals is that when they're born, they don't really have the ability to swim 24-7, so they need it, an area where they can haul out, and they haul out on ice. So in the springs, that ice is breaking up. Those animals, will, especially the young, will get dumped into the water and they'll drown. Thing is, nursing seals build up a hefty layer of fat, which is beneficial for a living seal, but horror-inducing in a dead one. You have a body that's encased in this blubber. On the other end, you've got this skull that's quite heavy. And so the weakest point is the neck. And so you've got this very, very heavy head. And as the body starts to decompose, it ends up falling off. And you get what looks like headless seals. Humans may not be personally beheading these seals, but this could be an unintentional consequence of our actions. Our verdict? Naturally occurring decomposition of seals that drown due to thinning ice.